Today I'll be learning about your genetic history, Finnish DNA. What is the genetic history of Finland? I thought this video would be pretty cool. I've never done any any type of videos like this, so yeah, let's check it out. What is the genetic history of Finland and what haplogroups are common in the country today? Now look at this map. It shows the speakers of the Indo-European languages across Eurasia. You can see that Finland is a notable exception to this, however. And this is because Finnish- Oh my god, I need, I need subtitles. Oh my god. <laughs> it's too thick his accent. Eh? What is he from? Uh, what is he from? From... Uh, I think it's probably like uh, Ireland for sure, right? Uh, Irish accent. Wait. Um, uh, uh, because it's too big, the subtitles. That's what she said. Um, yes. Uh, let's make it smaller. Okay. Let's do 100. Let's go. Yeah, let's start it from what the is the genetic history of Finland and what haplogroups are common in the country today? Now look at this map. Wait, what is an haplogroups? groups? I need to research that. Uh, that haplogroups. A set of empty DNA sequence variations that have evolved over time, reflecting the geographic origins of population along maternal lineages. Okay, I had no idea. So yeah, we're learning something new already. Yeah, let's continue. It shows the speakers of the Indo-European languages across Eurasia. You can see that Finland is a notable exception to this. However, oh, and this wow. is because Finnish is a Uralic language, even though most countries around it speak an Indo-European language. But Finland isn't just unique when it comes to its language family, it is also genetically very unique in Europe, making it even more fascinating to explore. Now, the majority of the population in Finland live in the south and southwest of the country, with its capital, Helsinki, right at the bottom. The Sami people, an indigenous people of northern Europe, live primarily in the north of the country, however, in the region that stretches over northern parts of Norway, Sweden and Russia, as well as Finland. What about the genetic history of Finland then? Well, the story starts when the first human settlers arrived after the last ice age. Around 10,000 BC, as the glaciers receded, small groups of hunter-gatherers migrated into the region from the south and the east. The first pottery appeared with the comb ceramic culture, however, which existed mm. from around 4,200 to 2,000 BC. Around 3000 BC, a significant genetic shift occurred with the arrival of Neolithic and Bronze Age cultures, particularly those associated with the Corded Ware culture, which is associated with early agriculture in ancient Finland. The Corded That's Ware amazing. culture, which spread across Northern and Central Europe, brought into European... By the way, go and check out this channel, Celtic History Decoded. Yes, I'm gonna subscribe because this stuff is really interesting. Limages and a mix of Yamnaya step ancestry to ancient Finland. However, unlike most other parts of Europe, Finland did not go on to adopt an Indo-European language, distinguishing it from most of Europe. Now, today we know that Finland speaks a Uralic language, but when and where did this Uralic influence come from, and were there also genetic influences associated with this arrival? Well, the origins of the Uralic languages are believed to have been somewhere around the Ural Mountains in Russia today, with groups migrating westward into places like present-day Finland, Estonia and parts of Western Russia. What mm. is interesting is that the genetic affinity of modern Finns mirrors their linguistic affinity. As the close yeah, the thing I don't understand is how the hell Hungarian speak a similar branch of language... Uh... That Finnish does. I mean, look where Hungary is. Doesn't make any sense, right? What the hell? Hope they will explain it. Closest genetic relatives of the Finns today are the Estonians and the Karelians, with the latter a Baltic Finnic ethnic group who live in a region which is today split between Finland and Russia. Both these people speak Uralic languages, and the Finns share an ancestry with other Uralic speaking groups, although to a lesser degree, such as the Uralic peoples in Russia and the Sami people. Now, this is because there is links, genetic links, between Uralic-speaking populations in general, as a 2018 study found that looked at the genes of Uralic-speaking populations. Most Uralic speakers share a distinct ancestral component of likely Siberian origin, oh, which suggests that the spread wow. of Uralic languages involved at least some demic components. What? 
Another fascinating study published in Nature That's Communications crazy. in 2018 looked at the spread of the Siberian ancestry into Europe and tried to date when it arrived. Their wow. results suggested that a new genetic component with strong Siberian affinity first arrived in Europe at least 3,500 years ago. That's crazy. These results describe the gene pool of modern Northeastern Europeans in general and of speakers of Uralic languages in particular as the result of multiple admixture of Bro, I love his accent. It's so cool. <laughs> between Eastern and Western sources since the first appearance of this ancestry component. Now, it is this Siberian component that is one major reason why the Finnish genetics is so unique in Europe. As in general, if we want to model the foundational genetics of most Europeans, the ancient genetics of, of most Europeans, it's a mixture of three main sources, Western hunter-gatherers, then early European farmers from around Anatolia, and then steppe ancestry during the Bronze Age, connected to the Yamnaya culture uh, and the Cordillera culture as well. But this model doesn't really work that well for the Finns. Although all three are present at some level in Finns, they also have this East Eurasian genetic component that likely originated in Siberia, something that is different to most other Europeans, and we'll see this affinity with North Eurasian peoples a little later when we look at the haplogroups of Finland. There is much more to the story, however. For nearly 700 years, between around 1150 and 1809 AD, Finland was part of the Kingdom of Sweden in some way, but did this have any genetic influence on the country? Well, Probably. this event actually speaks to a major feature in the genetic structure of Finland in general. As a 2009 study published in the European Journal of Human Genetics found, there are regional differences within the genetic structure of Finland. The main genetic difference within the country is between eastern and western parts, particularly on the male side. The reason for this, according to the results from this study, was due to a substantial Scandinavian gene flow into southwestern Finland, but not into the eastern parts of the country. This is reflected in the haplogroup distribution as well across the country, something we are going to go into in more detail a little later. But essentially, the Scandinavian associated Y-DNA haplogroup, I, is higher in Western Finland at around 30%, whereas the more Uralic associated haplogroup, N3, which is now called M1C, although found across the entire country, reaches higher rates of around 79% only in Eastern Finland with this haplogroup having a deep history in Siberia. In short, the results of this study found that there was a male bias gene flow from Scandinavia into western parts of Finland at times down through history, and this may have been connected to the period of Swedish rule, which would make sense logically as well. Some may argue that the Vikings had a little influence on this spread as well, just before this time of Swedish rule proper, but any genetic influence during the Viking Age seemed small on Finland. Now, I should also note quickly that Finland was under Russian rule from 1809 until it declared independence in 1917. Although the genetic influence of this wasn't dramatic from the information I've seen, it certainly didn't weaken this East Eurasian component in Finland. A 2024 study also noted that a percentage of the haplogroup N that we see in Finnish men today, the highest in the country, seems to have arrived with men who migrated from the south as opposed to just the east. These men crossed the sea via the Baltics from around Estonia, it seems, into southwest Finland. This further details the close affinity between Finns and Estonians. Mm. Now, before we move on to look at what haplogroups are common in the country today, there is another really interesting part of the story, an important part of the story, that is worth highlighting relating to the genetics of the country, the Finnish disease heritage. In general, exactly. Finland is a relatively isolated country and has had multiple population bottlenecks over its history, meaning that Finnish people are more genetically similar than people in many other parts of the world. Such bottlenecks occur when a major event, perhaps a violent conflict, disease or natural disaster, causes a large drop in population. The population that then expands after the event is more genetically similar than before. The effect has produced a set of genetic diseases that are more pronounced in Finland compared to other countries, with oh. 36 rare diseases regarded as Finnish heritage wow. diseases, with these conditions affecting the kidneys and the brain, amongst other parts of the body. What haplogroups are called- Oh my god, I really hope you are fine! Oh my god, I'm so worried right now. Bro, tell me in the comments if you have any of those diseases. I hope not. Oh my god, that's so scary. 
and so sad at the same time. Common in Finland today though, and how do they speak to the different events down through history? Well, if we start on the male side, the most common Y-DNA haplogroup in Finland today is N1C, at around 60% of the population. This haplogroup is rare in Western Europe, but widespread amongst the Finns, Estonians, the Sami and Northern Russians, and is very much a Uralic signature that reflects the Siberian component in the Finnish genome. Now, the second most common Y-DNA haplogroup in Finland is I1, at around 25 to 30%. I1 is the dominant haplogroup among Swedish, Norwegian and Danish populations and reflects the Scandinavian influence on the country, with haplogroup I in general having a long history in Europe going back to the last ice age, as I noted in my previous video, and it probably originated in Europe itself. I1 is more common in Western Finland, however, due to the Swedish influence as noted earlier. Two other Y-DNA haplogroups are worth mentioning, reflecting the Indo-European influence on the country, which is small but still notable, namely R1A at around 5-10% and R1B at around 3-5%. As far as the maternal side, H is the most common mitochondrial haplogroup in Finland at around 40% according to data from this 2018 study on the genes of Uralic speaking populations. This is the most common mitochondrial haplogroup in Europe as well, becoming so common mm. through multiple waves of migration, although the spread of the first farmers was a major event in their spread across the continent. U5 is the second most common mitochondrial haplogroup in Finland at around 25% of the population and this is an ancient haplogroup in Europe in general. This mitochondrial haplogroup is found at very high levels amongst the Sami people today as well. Other mitochondrial haplogroups worth mentioning in Finland are W at 7% and VK giant T at between 3.5 and 4.5%. Oh, this is so confusing so right now. <laughs> genetic history is shaped by a complex blend of interactions from Indo-European to Scandinavian influences, yet the presence of the Siberian component in the ancestry of Finnish people is one key reason why Finland is so unique in the genetics of Europe. Mm. But speaking of Scandinavia, how does the genetic history of Finland differ to its neighbour, Sweden? To find out, please click here. Mm. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have Finnish ancestry or if you're from Finland, please let me know in the comments below and, and your haplogroups, it'd be really interested to, to see. But yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. That was very interesting. At the end, uh, he lost me totally. I mean, <laughs> there were way too many numbers and mentions that I didn't understand at the end. So if anyone is an expert on DNA and this type of stuff, please explain it to me with uh, easier words <laughs> so I can understand it a little bit better. But it was really interesting, you know, it was really interesting. I see there are quite some videos like that. So maybe if you like this type of stuff, I like, I'm all up for science and all this type of stuff. So... If you want me to check out more of it, I can definitely do it. Let me know what you thought about this video. What do you think your origins are, of course. Uh, and yeah, just hope you have a lovely weekend. I mean, we're already Sunday. So just hope you have a lovely Sunday before going back to work tomorrow. And yeah, just enjoy, spend good time, quality time with your family or your loved ones. And yeah, I'll see you very soon in another video. Ciao, ciao.